Let's see the five things a smart aquaponics grower will never do. I am Jonathan and my aim is to help you to build your own aquaponics setup and to produce your own aquaponics food in the best conditions. So today we're going to see the five things smart aquaponics growers never do. So the first thing is they never grow one type of crop. All the food we buy from the supermarket at the moment is coming from monoculture, which means the food is produced in one field where you got only one crop. For example, if you buy corn from the supermarket, it's produced in a field where there is only corn, there is nothing else. In aquaponics, we don't want to use this technique. We want to mix the crop as much as possible to have a wide diversity. And that's what we call the biodiversity of our ecosystem. We want to have a lot of different plants for different reasons. The main one is that it helps us to avoid to have pests that grow everywhere and that are not managed. When you grow different crops, the pests, you know, they may be interesting in one type of uh, plant, but then they are not going to jump and invest all the other type of plants. And at the same time, you got a lot of different predators that are living in those different plants. So you always got uh, a good balance in your ecosystem. You always got some predators that are here to regulate the pest population. So that's the key in aquaponics. We always grow a large biodiversity, not one type of crop, but a lot of different species of plants. The other reason is also because we work in an ecosystem that is going to produce different types of nutrients and different types of minerals. And if you grow one crop, you're going to have one need in a specific mineral. You know, every plant, every species of plants, they got a different profile that they like. But if you grow a multitude of plants, then you're going to cover a large spectrum of, uh, of needs, basically. You know, they're going, to, they're going to use all the different minerals that are available in the setup. And so, basically, you average and uh, it's, it's way easier to balance the aquaponics system when you grow a wide biodiversity of plants. So, point number two is to never spray your aquaponics system. So it may seem very obvious, but you know, when you grow some, some plants for months, I mean days, weeks and months sometimes, uh, and then when they are almost ready to be harvested and you see some insect on it and the insect has started to eat the plant, it can be, for some people, it's very instinctive to spray, to buy some pesticide and to spray to kill the bugs because they want to preserve the, the crop. But we are in aquaponics and in aquaponics the system is closed. So whatever you spray in the system is going to finish in the grow bed, in contact of the fish, which is bad, but also in the grow bed where you got all your bacteria. And your bacteria will very probably have some troubles to resist to any pesticide. So don't spray anything on your aquaponics setup unless you are really sure that that's organic things that can really, uh, that are not going to damage your bacterial population. What I recommend is to just relax. If you respect the point number one, you always grow um, uh, a big biodiversity, you're going to have some natural predators that are here around. And in a week, they're going to take care of the problem you have. That's what happened every time. Every time I got some pests around and I can see the population of pests growing, after, after a few days, basically, I got the predators that are here and regulate this population of pests. So before acting, just take, take it easy, relax, have a look at your crop, have a look at what is present in your aquaponic system, and you will see that really, really often um, the crop is going to be um, saved by some insects that are already present in the aquaponic system somewhere. They just need to uh, eat, the, eat those, uh, those insects to basically uh, multiply, to take over, to basically uh, regulate this population of pests. So really it's not a big issue. And again, because you got a large biodiversity, if you got one crop that is affected, that's okay, because you got all the rest that is, go is not going to be so much affected. So, you know, in, a, in permaculture, we always say that we are happy 
to share 20% of our crop with nature. And most of the time you are really able to save a lot of your crop thanks to the natural predators that are present here. So never spray any pesticide in your aquaponics uh, grow bed. So point number three is that a smart aquaponics grower is not going to use an automatic feeder while he goes on holiday. He's just going to leave the fish being by themselves. They're going to survive without any problem, but he's not going to put an automatic feeder. And the reason why is because if you have an automatic feeder in your system and you go on holiday, while you are not there, if there is a problem with your pump, with whatever in the filtration, and the automatic feeder is continuing to feed your fish, you're going to have a concentration of pollutant, of toxic substance that are going to stay in the fish tank. And after a few days, your fish are going to be uh, in very high stress because of this concentration of, of ammonia or nitrates. And if it continues, your fish are going to die. So if you just if you want to go on holiday, you don't do anything to your, to your tank, you don't feed your fish, you leave them as they are. They are able to fast for a very long period of time, so you can go on holiday for a month without any problem. When you come back, obviously your fish are not going to grow, but at least they're going to stay alive, they're going to be in good condition, and then you can just feed them back when you come back. So again, you'd never do that, you never put an automatic feeder without having any, anyone to check that everything is working. Because if the pump is not working, you definitely don't want to feed your fish. Point number four you don't want to push your system too much. So basically, what you don't want in aquaponics is to have more fish than the bacteria are going to be able to handle. So you know that in aquaponics, the limit are the bacteria population. So you don't want to put too much fish, too many fish in your fish tank if your bacteria are not able to digest all the fish food that is going to be released. So really, if you are smart, if you want to have an aquaponic system that works, and if you don't want, if you want to avoid the troubles, just stay below the maximum limit of your system, the maximum capacity of your system. And if you want to know what is the maximum quantity of fish you can have in your aquaponic system, you just download um, the free aquaponics training that is in the description of this video just below. And I give you the ratio that you need to respect in terms of quantity or biomass of fish per volume of uh, grow bed, which is a quantity of bacteria that you can have in your coponic system. And finally, so point number five, it's more a sustainable point than a critical point for your coponic system, is to basically never use an oversized pump. So when I say never use an oversized pump, I'm, I'm just saying that if you can run your system with a small water pump and just add a little air pump aside, do it. Don't put a huge water pump because obviously a huge water pump is going to work perfectly. It's going to produce some nice fish, it's going to produce some nice, nice food. But if you can do the same job with a small pump, it's a shame to just move a lot of water and to use a lot of resources, electricity, because at the end of the day, the electricity has a very big impact on the planet, right? It costs a lot to the planet to produce some electricity. So try to reduce your electricity consumption. And therefore, to do that, just try to use very, a very well adapted pump. So that is just the size that you need for your aquaponics setup. So again, if you want to know the, the exact uh, size pump you, you should have for your aquaponics setup, uh, just download the free training that is in the description of the video again. And uh, here you're going to have this information, so you're going to be able to select the good pump for your own aquaponic system. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Uh, those five points uh, may seem very obvious to you, but I see the mistake made again and again. So I think this video is going to be useful for a lot of you. Uh, if you like it, please uh, give it a like, obviously, and share the video with your friends, with the community. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.
So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe. I'm going to release one video every week. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!